Hi everyone. I'm part of the Linux OS and virtualization training and documentation team. It is our team that built the Oracle Linux training station, which provides access to video training and to hands-on lab exercises. The labs are made available through the Luna platform, which is the focus of this video. You can access all of our Luna labs from the Oracle Linux training station at www.oracle.com slash go to slash ol train. I'll bring up a browser and go to this site. As you might notice, the GoTo link that I typed redirects to a GitHub page, so you could also access our landing page by typing this URL. From here, you see that we have separate learning tracks for Oracle Linux, Linux on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and a few more learning tracks. Training for these specific products are all discussed on other videos. For this video, I'm going to focus on getting to and running Luna Labs. Let's say I'm interested in a hands-on lab for Podman, which is part of Oracle Linux. I'll click the Oracle Linux link, which takes me to another page. From here, I'll just press Control F and search for Podman. All of our Podman training is under the virtualization link, so I'll click virtualization. Here you can see some KVM videos and one hands-on lab to create VMs with KVM. I'll scroll down and you'll see there is a section on containers, which includes our Podman training. As of this recording, we have eight hands-on labs related to Podman, but check back often as new labs and videos are being added frequently. I'll just click the first one, get started with Podman, which takes me to the Luna environment. From this page, I can click Launch Lab. You can also get to Luna at luna.oracle.com. This provides you access to all of the Luna labs, not just those that are linked to the Oracle Linux training station page. I'll switch back to my browser and go to this site. You'll see labs which are created by the Linux OS and Virtualization Engineering Training Team. These labs are linked to the Oracle Linux Training Station page, but you'll also see labs created by other organizations at Oracle. For example, you'll see labs created by Oracle Sales and Partner Academy. I'll scroll down, and here's a lab created by Graal VM at Oracle Labs. And there are other groups that create Luna Labs. Click on a lab you're interested in, and you can launch the lab. This third link I'll show, www.oracle.com slash go to slash Linux Luna, provides access to just those labs built by the Linux OS and Virtualization Engineering Training Development Team. I'll switch back to my browser and I'll go to this site. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that all of the labs say Linux OS and Virtualization Engineering. Click on a lab you're interested in and you can launch the lab. The last way to access Luna Labs is from the Oracle Help Center Learn page at docs.oracle.com learn. I'll switch back to my browser and go to this site. This page provides access to various tutorials, not all of which include a hands-on Luna Lab environment. But as this tile says, try a free lab. Look for the Try It button. I'll scroll down, and here is one about provisioning persistent volumes that has a Try It button. I'll click this tile to be taken to the tutorial page. But notice there is a note here with a link that says this tutorial is available in an Oracle provided free lab environment. Click this link and you're taken to the Luna page where you can launch the lab. Now that you know the different ways to access Luna Labs, I'll give a short demonstration on actually running a lab. All of the labs have two tabs on the main page, an overview tab and a labs step page. The overview tab provides a short description, a lab overview, attended audience, level, and a few more pieces of information. All labs also provide a feedback button where you can send lab feedback. You can also give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But for our Linux OS and virtualization engineering labs, that is those that are accessible from the Oracle Linux training station page, we have implemented a contact us section where you can provide feedback. This is our preferred method to obtain feedback. Click the button and you can send an email to a shared group email account, which is monitored by several people and includes the title of the lab as the subject. When providing feedback or if you have a question about a lab, please use this button to ensure a prompt response from our team. The overview tab also includes a time limit. This lab has a time limit of one hour, after which the lab environment will close and the cloud resources will be made available for other labs and other users. The lab steps provides all the hands-on tasks 
included in the lab. You can scroll down through here and see if this lab is something that you might actually want to try to complete. Click the Launch Lab button to launch the lab. Otherwise, you can exit the screen and go on with your day. I'm going to click Launch Lab and give a quick demonstration. The lab instructions appear on the left side of your window, and you just page through those or page back. On the right side, a desktop will appear after a few seconds. Once the desktop icons appear, double click the Luna Lab icon on the desktop. From here, you'll see a spinning gear icon next to the Resources tab. This indicates that provisioning of the environment is in progress. The gear icon will stop spinning and change to a check mark when the environment is ready to use. Some labs, which require only a single compute instance, take only a few seconds or minutes to provision the resources. The more complex labs, those that require multiple compute instances, possibly block volumes, additional VNICs, and significant software installs and configurations, can take up to 30 minutes to provision the environment. The information box says that for this lab, the deployment takes about 20 minutes to finish, so you might want to step away for a bit and return to complete the lab. I've sped ahead a bit, and now you see the check mark next to the Resources tab, indicating the environment is ready. Most of our labs do not require you to log on to the OCI console. There is a link here to do so, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes, but first, I just want to open a terminal window and log into the Compute Instance, which is all you need to do for most of our labs. Click on the Resources tab, and you can see the IP addresses of whatever Compute Instances were created for a particular lab. This lab created three Compute Instances, one named OCNE-Control, one named OCNE-Operator, and one named OCNE-Worker. I can open up a terminal window from the Luna desktop. I'll click this tab to minimize the window. Then I'll right click on the Luna desktop and select Open Terminal here from the pop-up menu. Commands in the lab steps can be copied and pasted into the terminal window. I'll click on the end of this command box to copy this command to the clipboard. Then I'll right click in my terminal window and paste. I'll dismiss this information box so I can see my command in the terminal window. To get the IP address for the OCNE-Control node, I'll click on the Luna Lab tab here to open the window. I can copy the IP address by clicking here. I'll bring my terminal window back to the foreground, backspace to the at sign, right click on the desktop, paste the IP address, and press enter. Because this is the first time I've logged onto this node, I need to accept the key fingerprint by typing yes at the prompt. Now I'm logged on to the OCNE-Control node, and I can continue with the lab steps provided on the left. Some of our labs do require you to log on to the OCI console. You will be instructed to do so when necessary. But to log on to the console, I'll bring back my Luna Lab window to the foreground and click on the Luna Lab tab. From here, there is a quick link to the OCI console and the username and password credentials. I'll click the OCI console link and the Oracle Cloud login window appears in a separate tab, prompting me for a username and a password. I'll click the Luna Lab tab and copy the username by clicking here. Then I'll click the Identity Cloud Services tab and paste the username. I'll repeat these steps to copy and paste the password. I'll click Sign In, and I'm in. You can dismiss any pop-up dialogues that appear. I'll click Skip for this window. I'll explore on my own. Dismiss the checklist and confirm. Follow the lab steps, which usually prompt you to view the compute instances. To do so, I'll click the Hamburg icon to expand the list of menu options. I'll select Compute Instances. You need to choose a compartment, so I'll scroll down a bit to do so. I'll click in the Compartment Selection window. Expand the Root Level Demo Services compartment. Expand the Luna Labs entry. And then I can select my compartment, which is named Luna-Available, followed by a series of random characters. Once I've chosen the compartment, my compute instances appear. Here we can see the three compute instances needed for this lab are running. You can ignore any instances that are terminated. I also want to show that the compartment information is provided in the, in the Luna Lab window. I'll click the Luna Lab tab, then click the Oracle Cloud tab. Here you can see tenancy information and compartment information. 
In this demonstration, the compartment name ends with the letters 3D, 6B. I'll view the OCI console and confirm the compartment is the same. This concludes the demonstration of how to begin the labs. As I said, most labs only require you to open a terminal window and perform the steps from the command line. There is one note here that I haven't discussed. It says, see the Oracle Linux lab basics for connection and other usage instructions. I'll have a quick look at this. Clicking on the link opens these instructions in a separate window. This provides all the information I've already discussed and demonstrated. The important thing to note here is that this is for informational purposes only. There is a launch lab button, but you never launch this lab. Once you have reviewed the details, return to the original lab. These instructions describe the need to double click the Luna Lab icon from the Luna desktop to begin. It explains how the gear icon next to the resources tab rotates during provisioning and then changes to a check mark when the environment is ready. It explains how to copy the IP address and how to open a terminal window from the Luna desktop and connect to the compute instance. There is a section here on how to disable a warning that you'll get when you copy and paste multiple commands from the lab steps to a terminal window. And finally, there is some instructions, which I already covered, for how to log on to the OCI console. Again, do not launch this lab. This is for informational purposes only. Close the window and return to your original lab. A couple more things to note. You can move this bar out of your way by clicking and dragging on the far right end. You can move this little icon out of your way by clicking and dragging on it. Once you've completed the lab, click on the End Session icon and confirm you want to end your current session. This concludes this demonstration of using Luna Labs. Hopefully it was helpful. Please contact us at the email address provided in the Contact Us section on the Overview page if you have questions or just want to provide feedback.